of Evie. And welcome to an area of Iraq known as a Triangle of Death. Now we'll venture north through one of the most dangerous regions of the country, an area controlled by ISIS for almost half a decade. We'll be experiencing security and checkpoints on a level not yet seen before and learning firsthand about the terrors caused by one of the world's worst terrorist groups. So, come along while we explore the back roads to Mosul. Let's check it out. Alright guys, if you ever wonder how our driver Ali keeps so fit, it's because of this. Welcome, this is how he keeps hold of the steering wheel for all those long hours in the car. <laughs> There's a bit of a weakening, this one's a bit easy. <laughs> That's how hard it is for me. Go, let's see how easy. Look at this here. See? The guy's a fit man. He might have a big belly on him, but he's a fit man. <laughs> Let's see. Living in the fast lane. This is our alley. Living in the fast lane. Oh, Don't take us too long to get up north, will it? We have the mountains there to our right. And further down this road as we head towards the town of Mosul. Well, we have officially arrived in the wild, wild west. This is the area that faced most resistance and was controlled by ISIS for many, many years during the time of maybe 2014, 2015. Now there are signs of conflict no matter where you are here. Checkpoints, burnt out cars, and more recently tanks and even service there military weapons. And I don't really know how to describe it, but from what I've seen, it's like a scene of a movie. You know, many times that we've passed through have either been completely destroyed and abandoned or severely damaged. Many of those towns actually we checked on Google Maps, you can see it's just been completely wiped out from the various battles and the conflict between ISIS and the government and uh, even the US Army. Even this petrol station, which we're in at the minute, has its own compound. So you can tell things are very, very different in this region of, uh, of Iraq. It's a, lot, it's a lot different than what we're used to. So yeah, I think things are going to be very different over the next couple of days, but I'm excited. This is the kind of thing I really, really enjoy, you know, going and seeing the, the scars from the various wars that have happened here recently. Alright guys, we have made a quick stop on our way up north to Mosul at the ancient city of Hatra, which is one of the first per Persian kingdoms. And what we're going to do actually, we're going to have a quick chat with one of the guys who lives here because this whole area, this entire region actually, was controlled by ISIS for four years. So we're going to see if we can have a little chat to him and see what life was like under the rule of ISIS. Look at this. Incredible details since, what did you say, six? 600? 2900 BC. And still has so many of the features. The door surrounds the heads. Just out of interest, how come uh, ISIS used this area as their like compound or sort of headquarters of this region? For four years, yeah. So, you know, we are nearby the border. Yeah. So, ISIS, the first time when they show them uh, themselves to the world from Syria. Yes. So they came from Syria to Iraq. It's convenient. The first time they controlled Mosul and some of them came to here. So the first place to them is to control Hatra. So they can they can make Hatra as a compound or a military base for them and also to teach the new soldiers to get more followers. Ah, so this was a training the... complex as well. Yeah. And, but, who, but who would have helped? Because as far as I was aware, in, um, when it comes to ISIS, everyone's e either a all wife time, or a soldier. All the time there is people, like inside the cities, also a port. Right. Uh, especially there is like the young people when they saw, like I asked Abu, uh, say, uh, before after that, 
they said that there is some like young people when they are so their other friends they have guns yeah. they are driving cars and they know maybe uh, ISIS will stay here to, 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 to like the end maybe yeah uh, and uh, maybe they there is they cannot see like the Iraqi army so they said okay let's go with them maybe we'll, they will give gun money cars mm -hmm. and they can well they have no option also they don't have any yeah. other choice it's either that or else shot, because I'm surprised actually ISIS had any any form of prison. And it's all original, eh? Yeah, some, like all original, some, for example, this is original, but here, and then it's covered. Uh, okay. Here in the middle also. That's been already done, okay. Oh, a little bit. And what happened to the statue? It's like a uh, gun, but that's before, not now. Way, way before, yeah. okay, okay. So this is the shoes and this part you can see this is like the Oh police. my goodness. It's used as a target to teach new soldiers. God, they're not very good, are they? Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be fairly well intact. Mm. You know, not bad. That's such a shame. That is a target. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, this is not original, this is Kobe. Ah, you can okay. find the original one in the Iraqi museum. But look at this, just put the holes. And that's to teach, you know, I suppose ISIS had anyone from, what, 14, 15? Sorry? Um, ISIS had anyone from the age of 14 or even 15 in the ranks? Young boys. Young boys. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. But you're requesting come on, game, sorry. Come on, come on, little guy. Hello. Come on. All right. Hello. Hello. Salam alaikum. Take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Oh, no, 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 not in your mouth. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, let me get down. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Shukran. Because I cannot explain how much of a bandit country this is. You know, we have not seen probably a major town or even a big village in probably the guts of at least an hour, an hour and a half. Just checkpoints, and the checkpoints get sort of smaller and smaller the further away you get from the big cities here in Iraq. But this is another area where they would have used as, you know, some sort of target practice. Probably something would have sat here, maybe something here. Certainly in these areas where there's more damage but, but what a shame you know this place goes back so many thousands of years there's absolutely just no respect for it oh my day right sorry about the wind it's not great oh nice Poxy, what is it with me and falling over in Iraq here we go welcome to Hatra Yes, you can't get an idea actually. The size of the place. Mm -hmm. All these hills not like hell. All these is drawings. Yeah, aye, the hills are actually walls. Yeah. So the walls around the city, we can see these black towers. Yes. And the main walls. All these. Look for this. Oh shit. Use as a target. Another target, everything's a target. I suppose if they run out of people, they've always got statues and so just imagine, take yourself back nine years, walking through here, an ISIS training center, ISIS headquarters, for this part of Iraq. Thousands of, oh, there could be booby traps in here, eh? Well, maybe mines. Was, was there much destruction caused by ISIS? Controlled by ISIS, yeah. Was there much destruction? Sorry? Was there much destruction? No. No? You mean like destruction by ISIS? Yeah, like they didn't like cause any of this. No, no. Ma ma sar tadmir bil bin ISIS bin yani mithal hasa hay. Hiya hi shi shana. It's like this before. Ah, because that's unusual. But they destroyed all the statues. Sorry, that was the only thing. Okay, okay. Usually, what they do, they destroy it as and when they're being sort of. Um, when they're being pushed back, yeah. you know, and when they say, right, okay, we've got to go back, we've got to leave. To no, they didn't, okay. 1985, is that what it says, 1985? Yeah. His name, Ahmed. 
Ahmed. Oh, what a nice guy. Ahmed engraving his name and date into something that's about 2,000, 3,000 years old. Oh, there we go. One of the many thousands or tens of thousands of bullets. sunset. Look at this. In the middle of the desert of Iraq. So here, I don't know if you can hear me, here you get a, a real scale of the size of this place, the size of this ancient site. Obviously this here would be one of the main walls and then just outside it you have the area for where the soldiers or general people and then where we come from on the other side. It almost goes as far, I don't know if you can see just in the distance, the buildings near the horizon. It almost goes as far as the eye can see. An incredible size for being, what, 3,000 years old? Where else do you get it? So there we go, there is Hatra, the Kingdom of Hatra, and the old ISIS headquarters and also training camp. A bit strange to walk around here and think who would have been here possibly, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago. You know, the many people here are willing to give up their life for the cause. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit, um, yeah, it's not really the feeling you should be getting from a place like this. It's stunning. And I'm quite surprised that it's, it's uh, still in the shape it is, considering. Nice. There we go. Okay, back into the back into another kitchen. Oh, come on, Michael. Thank you. Oh my word! Look at this here. Soup. Very nice. Well, what's your name? Nice to meet you. Right. Okay. Here we have it. So this one's lamb or beef? This is meat. This is meat. Right. Okay. So this one. Okay, anyway, we've just arrived in Mosul and we've stopped off this traditional, I think this is going to be a traditional Mosul sandwich. So this one's beef, as far as I'm concerned, and we have another one here, lamb. So this is exactly how they make it. So they have what looks like a pita bread, some meat, onion, tomatoes, and your man's going to show us exactly how it's done. Look at this, professional. What you want to There we go. There we go. Bit of fat, bit of flavour, bit of sauce. Everything you need. Very good. Shukran. Shukran Habibi. And then this is the soup, eh? Right. This is how they cook all the like, meat. Ah, okay. There you go. Well, have you ever seen a biggest pot as that? Very good. Shukran. Here we are. Stone, you don't get this anywhere else. Hello! <laughs> yes, yes. Come on. Two only go. for him. Two only for him. Typical. Typical. Salam alaikum. <laughs> He's just, it's just sorry, too much chaos here. Some cars just parked beside us, and we obviously have our. Um, so one's mine and one's yours, eh? Sorry, it's mine. Uh, yeah. Are you having two? Yeah. I know one only. One, so one's mine. I'm not sure if this is the way you're supposed to do it, but no bit of this. This. Right, and here goes. Do you know what they say? Hider, do you know what they say? Sorry. Bismillah. Bismillah. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, like this is Uzi sandwich. Uzi. What's it called? Uzi. Oh, right, okay. No, it's, on the it's quite nice. This is the first sandwich, but of all the sandwiches I had in Iraq. Very few come with salads, so it's good to get some tomatoes, some uh, onion, but yeah, very good. What's 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 this here, one? It's like, how did you know how the soup? Ah, oh, yeah, it's uh, lamb meat. It's like the soup, the, the soup of lamb meat. Okay. Of the lamb meat. Yeah. And we'll try them all, huh? 
gentlemen. Yes. Right, okay, now we have round two of our dinner, as is normally the case here in Iraq. Go ahead, what do we Which have? Which dinner? The first one, the second one, the third yeah, one? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> I'm, I have a huge problem. People thought I was going to get shot or kidnapped here, and I'm definitely going to die from uh, eating too much food. Right, let's go. So this is called Asa'is. It's the tail okay. meat with the Some rice and soup and the bread. bread. Okay. So this, this is, is like a mixture of everything? Yeah. This is usually we like to eat it in uh, winter because okay. of the weather is cold. It's called hummus. Have I tried it? Yeah, I've tried this before. Yeah, yeah. Hummus soup. This is called qaliye, Islam meat. Uh, it's different, uh, sorry, it's cooked in different by different way. Okay. It's also a soup, you can try it with the rice and Let's one go of it. Dig in, dig in. Do you use your hands? Yes, for example, this one you will use your hand. I will try it. Can, you can see, you can see. No, no, let's go for it, let's go for it. It's hard. Here we go, here we go. It's just knives and pork, it's just so much easier. Alright, there we go. Yeah. It's like stew. We have this meal in um, Ireland called stew. Stew. And here we go. Here is some hummus. Chickpeas, like a warm soup. A little bit colder here in Mosul, eh? Colder here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And finally, we get to try the last dish oh, yeah. for our evening shisha. Mm. How is it? Mm. Guys, the food nearly gets better the further north you go, I think. Basra, the Najaf, nothing beats the sweets of Karbala. That's why the driver's the size he is, because he lives in Karbala. So, after another long day's driving, we have finally arrived at the Pearl of the North. Welcome to Mosul. And of course, like any other day in Iraq, it must be finished, started and finished with a cup of chai. And we are at something that can only be described as a Domino's convention. What's going on here? Everyone's playing dominoes and cards. Like cards and dominoes. It's a huge outdoor space, incredible size, so many tables, so many chairs, everybody playing dominoes. Probably never seen so many people playing dominoes in my life. And people just having shisha, having chai, because it is of course the famous Friday night here in Iraq where everyone's off. This is the weekend. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll take a walk through Mosul Old Town. So here we go, welcome to Mosul. And yes, pretty good day driving from the Triangle of Death up through Hatra, which although we did get talking to somebody who actually lived under ISIS rule for three years, but unfortunately they didn't want to be um, in front of the camera. Obviously you can understand that because there's still a bit of a threat from ISIS in that part, especially in any of the areas outside the major cities and over to the west. So it kind of ticked all the boxes in that respect, so you can understand. But yes, he said it was like, fuck, it was terrible. He was telling us a, a few stories. And the way he put it was, er, you know, he has a life, but he's not able to live. Like he's just dead inside. That's what he said. He's dead inside, which just made me wonder, fucking hell. You know, three years is a long, long time. You don't have family as well, because, you know, we all know ISIS comes in and you're either thrown a, a gun in your hand or else you're told to marry one of the soldiers. So yes, he lived under it for three years and then escaped somehow. Not too sure exactly and then a year after that um, obviously the uh, Iraqi army came in and now we are in Mosul after a big feed as is always the way with Iraq and we are in the hotel called like Palace something but it's pretty decent yeah let's show you what a hotel in Mosul at $80 gets you first things first look at these tasty numbers off-white slides Never thought you'd get those. Sink, toilet, the most bizarre shower, I think. You know, that's definitely an afterthought. Definitely an afterthought. And this here is like somebody's front door in the UK back, you know, fucking 20 years ago. That's like, you go up and just, hello, is, is my me in? Anyway, so yes, twin beds. Mm, it's a 6.3 I think, 6.3, green, lovely, lovely, not really much else to say but you know not bad for TV, not bad for 80, 
80 dollars and let's have a look at the situation what the hell's going on here okay here we are don't know what's going on about this but welcome to Mosul I'll take it <laughs> 